What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're looking at probability and this is an introduction. Instead of focusing on any maths, what we're really going to look at is the language of probability. The most important thing that we need to know is that probability is assigning a numerical value to something happening, to a chance or the likelihood of an event occurring in the future. The word here that's really important for us is outcome. So this is what happens at the end of an experiment or a game. Other words you could look at are things like result or event or even just what we want to happen after something occurs. In my opinion, probability is one of the most important mathematical skills that we're going to learn and it's really important to get on top of it really quickly. This is something that we will use for the rest of our lives. Being able to kind of predict the future and make sure that we're on the lookout for scams or gambling that's not in our favor is something that's really important and I guarantee will help you forever. So the first language that we've got to talk about is the concept of equal versus unequal. And these do really make intuitive sense. Equal probabilities are where every single outcome that could happen is exactly the same chance of occurring. So they've got the same probability. So the easiest example of this is if you think about rolling one die, okay? So the options of rolling a die are one, two, three, four, five, and six, pretty obvious. And we know that they're equal chances because the chance of getting a two and the chance of getting a five are exactly the same. The outcome for every single one of these is exactly the same. So one way to think about it, is this fair? If you were playing a game where you needed to roll a specific number and someone was playing with die that didn't have an equal outcome, you would go, this game sucks, I'm not playing. So this concept of fairness or an equal outcome every time really does make intuitive sense. And it's something that I want you to think about when we go through this probability the whole way. So if you've got unequal chance, this is just the opposite. It means that some outcomes are more likely to occur than other outcomes. So this would be like having a die that instead of having five and six at the end, you have two fives. And now if I told you, hey, you and I, let's play a game where if I roll an odd number and you roll an even number, I win, right? You'd say, well, this game sucks. There's more odd numbers than even numbers. So there is a greater chance that my outcome occurs. So this would be a loaded game or a game that's not intuitively fair. And another example of this would be in this spinner. There's only three options, red, blue, or green. But if I said, if I roll a green here and you get a red, I'm the winner. That doesn't seem very fair to you at all, okay? So because there is a greater area here of green, I have a larger chance of winning. My outcome is more likely. So it's not a fair or equal game in this sense. So being able to recognize between equal outcomes and unequal outcomes is a really important skill for real life. If you can't see this, you are someone that might be scammed or not be able to see the consequences of a bet that's gonna pay off in the future. So getting on top of this language and thinking in these kind of probability ways is a really important skill. So we've said that probability is assigning a numerical value to a chance outcome. So the way that we do this is we put on top of a fraction what we want to see and then divide that by anything that could possibly happen. So our probabilities are based in fractions and then because of this, we can change them into percentages or decimals. Another way to think about this in more mathsy terms is that instead of saying what we want to see, we call this the desired outcome or a favorable outcome. And this is gonna be divided by the sample space. This word sample space is an incredibly important term. It's just anything that could happen. So another example is if I rolled a die and I said, you win if you get a seven, that's impossible. So it's outside of the sample space. So an example of a question that could occur is that I wanna know what's the probability of rolling a five on a six sided dice. So we need to know what the sample space is first. So this is just one, two, three, four, five, and six. So these numbers are the sample space. Then all you have to do is tell me how many times or how many outcomes are favorable to me. So I only win if I roll a five. So that only happens once. So my fraction is one, that's what I want, divided by the outcomes that could happen. And there are six of them. So the fraction is just one over six you're done. For this next question, I'll give you better odds. Instead of just five winning, you can win if you get a three or a five. 
Again, the sample space is going to be six. They're the options that could happen. But this time, instead of one favorable outcome, there are two. So all we have to do is write the desired outcomes, and there are two of those, divided by the six that could happen. Because we are doing fractions, you are going to have to simplify it, and this becomes one over three, and that's your final answer. So for these questions, the maths is not too difficult. As long as we've got that idea of what we want divided by what could happen, I think you're going to find these totally fine. So one really important note is that fractions in probability can never be improper. So there can't be more favorable outcomes than what actually could happen. That doesn't make any sense. So that means when we convert these fractions into decimals or into percentages, we cannot have a decimal that's greater than one. And we can't have more than 100% chance of something happening. You might hear someone be like, oh, 110% chance this happens. This team's going to win 110% sure. But that's not actually true. We can only go up to 100% in these examples. So that means that our number line goes from zero to one. Zero is there is no chance that this will happen, or this is something that is impossible. Another way to think about this is if you have a fraction with a zero divided by the sample space, that couldn't happen, so you have zero percent. And that's on the furthest left-hand side here. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got one. This means a 100% chance that it will happen, or that an event is certain to happen. There's no chance it won't. Another way to think about this is if your desired outcome is divided by all the outcomes that are possible, so six over six, you would get a 100% chance that you win. Right in the middle here, you've got 50% or 0.5. So this would be like if you flip a coin and you get heads or tails. And that's a really classic example. So because we need heads, one outcome, divided by two outcomes, we just have one over two. This is equal to 0.5 or 50%. You'll hear words like, oh, even odds or 50-50 chance, and these all represent right in the middle of this number line. So again, if we went back to that example where you got the probability of rolling a three or a five got you the win, we said that that would occur one out of three times. So the fraction there is a third. If we change this into a decimal, that's 0.33, and it's gonna be on this side of the entire curve. One thing to think about is that everything on this side where I put the red star, everything over here is less likely to happen than 50% of the time. So we call this unlikely or not probable or anything like that. Whereas if we're on the other side, that is where things are likely to occur. So if I said rolling one to five, you win. And if you roll a six, you lose. You would say that's a great deal because five out of the six outcomes will give you the win. So this is equal to uh, 0.86, right up there, very close to this certain mark. So this is something where likely you would win, and that's the language we're using up on this side. Finally, the reason that probability is a little bit more difficult than the things that we've done before is that we've got to be able to turn fractions, which we know what they represent, what we want divided by what could happen, and we've got to turn that into a decimal. I would highly recommend using your calculator for as much of these as you can. It is really good to know your quarters, your halves, your three quarters, all of that stuff. But if you just hit that SD button on your calculator, it will give you a decimal for a fraction. And that's a really good trick to have. And then if you need to give your answer as a percentage, just have it in the decimal form on your calculator and then times by 100. And that will give you the percentage every time. But then the reason that this gets a little bit harder is we've got to be able to turn our fractions, our decimals, and our percentages into actual language so we can communicate it really effectively to someone else. So words like impossible, certain, likely, unlikely are all things that you need to know what they actually mean. And then you even have regional dialects where someone might say something and you're just expected to know what it means. For example, if you said that that's that horse has Buckley's chance of winning, it means that it wouldn't have any chance of winning. And that's something in Australia you might have to know. Just making sure you know the language around probability takes this from a maths lesson to something that you'll definitely use in the real world. I do hope you found this lesson helpful. We're gonna get into more mathsy stuff soon, and I hope to see you again.